Thank you, Mr Acting President. I wish to also place on the record my condolences for the people who lost their lives and for their families during this past summer's bushfire season. I, like everyone in New South Wales, was deeply saddened at the news of the deaths of the Rural Fire Service members Geoffrey Keaton, Andrew O'Dyer and Samuel McPaul, as well as the crew of the Coulson Aviation Flight Crew, Ian Macbeth, Paul Hudson and Rick de Morgan Jr. I also join my colleagues in offering my sympathies to those who have been affected by the fires, whether through the death of loved ones, uh, injury or the loss of or damage to their own homes or properties or their livelihoods, their businesses, of course. Uh, Mr. Mr Acting uh, Deputy President, the numbers from this fire season are difficult to comprehend. Uh, tomorrow will mark 200 days of major incident operations for the New South Wales RFS. Uh, Mr Acting President, it's unprecedented. Over the last eight months, there have been 11,396 separate bushfires and grass fires across the state of New South Wales, burning around 5.49 million hectares and around 2,448 homes have been completely destroyed and a further 945 have been damaged. In total, well over 11,000 buildings um, in Australia have been destroyed or damaged. Um, our wildlife has also been impacted with large numbers of animals killed by the fires, of course, outlined by previous speakers here tonight. And the fires impacted so many communities up and down the New South Wales coast and, of course, inland. I spoke last year in this place about the fires that impacted North Rothbury and Greeter in the Hunter Valley on the 12th of November. The North Rothbury fire threatened people and property as it rapidly took hold there. Uh, the Newcastle Herald reported that flames from this fire were more than 100 foot high. Residents described that the firefighters were uh, very quickly hosing down the roofs and putting out spot fires that day. Uh, the bushfire at Greeter also damaged property and caused concern about the possible loss of homes as it quickly spread and burned 34 hectares of bushland with the fire front just metres from homes. The quick response from firefighters, including the 737 large air tanker, the Marie Bashir, and crews from Victoria as well, ensured that no homes would be lost from these fires. The Central Coast did not escape the impact of the fires. And for more than two weeks, the mountain community watched waited and prepared for the Three Mile Fire, adjoining the massive Gospers, Gospers Mountain Fire to impact the region as its 60 kilometre front moved east across the Darug and Yengo National Parks. Residents prepared their properties, some moving a large amount of the contents of their homes to safer locations. The RFS held regular community meetings advising residents on how to prepare. On the 5th of December, the fire had already burnt 11,392 hectares. When it arrived, it impacted the areas of Lower Mangrove, Greengrove, Mangrove Creek and Mangrove Mountain. The day before, the fire had crossed Mangrove Creek itself. RFS units and two helicopters fought to protect homes and other property, and a few days of respite gave crews the opportunity to backburn ahead of the fire. By the 10th of December, when conditions once again intensified, the fire had grown to 31,000 hectares in size and was impacting Colnura as well. The, the fire had broke containment lines in a few places, but crews were able to quickly contain this with the help of dozens of trucks, helicopters no. and again the 737 large air tanker. Over the following week and a half afterwards, firefighters from the RFS, uh, Parks and Wildlife Service, uh, Fire and Rescue, Forestry Corporation and crews from New Zealand worked to contain the fire, which in total burnt over 45,000 hectares and at one stage had a perimeter totalling 500 kilometres, with the fire officially contained on the 22nd of December. Some property had been damaged, but mostly the community had escaped the devastation that had been felt elsewhere throughout the state. A similar threat also existed in uh, Wollombi, near Cessnock, as multiple fire fronts from the Gosford's Mountain fire blaze to the south, the Little L fire to the west, the Crumps Complex fire to the east and the Owendale blaze to the north loomed large. On the 10th of December, there were more than 20 tankers and 37 crews in the village. Among them were crews from Sydney, Victoria, New Zealand and the USA. The Cessnock advertiser reported that fire and rescue set up three tankers 
surrounding the Wollombi Tavern to protect, and I quote, the most important place in town. A new fire began in the early hours of the 31st of December in Charmhaven and quickly jumped the Wallara Creek and started burning to the north. Although smaller uh, than the fires that were burning on the south coast that day, the impact was still considerable locally. Uh, homes and fences caught fire as the front raged past Blue Haven. A fire also caused great concern at Wanji Wanji uh, on New Year's Eve, burning more than 148 hectares of bushland and causing residents in Wanji and Arcadia Vale uh, to implement their bushfire survival plans. I thank the firefighters who tackled these particular blazes on the Central Coast and the Lower Hunter, and I acknowledge that many of those involved in fighting those fires have also been deployed elsewhere throughout the state uh, throughout this horrific season. Finally, Mr Acting President, I want to mention the Coasties Bushfire Appeal, which was held uh, on Friday evening of the last week. Earlier this year, I joined a committee of locals chaired by Gareth McRae of Radio 2CH fame, which had formed to organise a fundraising dinner and auction uh, charity items to support Central Coast RFS brigades and the families of the heroic RFS volunteers who sadly lost their lives this season. Uh, the committee included Marita Sade, John Ursino, Kieran Clay, Michael Hayes, Captain Angela Burford, uh, Superintendent Vicky Campbell, Sue Dengate, John Irvine, Councillor Jilly Pillen and Mary Crammond. Uh, I'm pleased to report that gala dinner was a great success. It was totally sold out with 126 people in attendance, including the Commissioner Shane Fitzsimons. Uh, and the Minister for Emergency Services, David Elliott MP, and Member for Terrigal, Parliamentary Secretary for the Central Coast, Adam Crouch. Uh, we raised over $48,000, and I know that that will be put to good use, with half of the funds raised going to the families of Geoffrey Keaton, Andrew O'Dwyer and Sam McPaul, the remaining half of funds to go to local Central Coast RFS brigades. Uh, I want to thank the businesses particularly that donated items and supported the event so generously. Mr Acting President, there are so many stories from these fires and there are too many people to thank. Uh, this fire season has put considerable strain on our state, but we could not have made it without the thousands of volunteers and emergency services personnel who have worked tirelessly over a long period. And I acknowledge the exceptional leadership of New South Wales Rural Fire Service Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons, uh, and I don't think that we could adequately articulate how grateful we are for his leadership. He leads an organisation with more than 70,000 brave volunteers, many of whom serve as a member of one of the 86 brigades on the Central Coast and Lower Hunter. I also acknowledge the supporting emergency services, including Fire and Rescue New South Wales, the New South Wales Police Force, the Forestry Corporation of New South Wales, the National Parks and Wildlife Services, New South Wales Ambulance and the New South Wales State Emergency Service for their efforts in tackling these fires. Mr Acting President, everybody who lived in New South Wales throughout these devastating, uh, this devastating fire season will forever remember the efforts and sacrifice made by all who endeavoured to sa save and protect life and property over the past several months. 